No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here with an absolute legend, Danny Diablo, in the building. How are you feeling, man? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. No. Thank you. It means a lot to me. 100%, man. Like, you're you're somebody who I always, like, just grew up looking at as, like, wow, that's, like, the fucking baddest dude in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Well, I'm, thank you. That means a lot, but my music draws a lot of fucked up people. Yeah, definitely. I was one of them. I was one of them who related to it. I was like, holy shit, this dude is is the fucking real deal. But I grew up, like, outside of Boston. Oh, that's so I'm, I'm also looking at you, like, you know, you and your bands and shit are like the fucking Yankees, yeah. where it's like, okay, this is kind of the other side, yeah, other side but they're fucking side, crazy. So yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. I always I always went up to uh, Brockton, Massachusetts. Shout out Brockton. Hard Shout city. To, uh, Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, but... uh. Brockton was the, like to us, like Boston was wherever, but Brockton was like hard. Yeah. With Cape Verdeans, Dominicans. So, like, we're, well, I'm from Queens, so like it was cool seeing like Puerto Ricans in Boston and Brockton. Right. right? So, I've seen some pretty extreme violence in, Bo- in Brockton in my yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely going down had, over had, there. Had a few, few uh, crazy stuff in, in Brockton. Uh, yeah. And in the, the stories I heard about Brockton are even worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you were wrapped up in some of that. Yeah. Um, okay, so take me back in time. You are born in Queens. I was bo- actually born in Harlem. Oh, okay, right. My mother's from uh, Spanish Harlem. Uh, my father's from East New York, uh-huh. uh, Brooklyn. Right. So my father's Jewish and my mother's Puerto Rican black. You know? Uh huh. So. And so, like, w- what did you gravitate towards first? Because, like, I always look at you as somebody who could have, like, very easily just become, you know, a, a rap fan, like a, a sort of rap type person, but then you also were just, like, attracted to the hardcore side of things. Like, what culturally, what did you get interested culturally, in first? Before everything was graffiti. Really? Interesting. So okay. It has nothing to do with uh, everyone thinks graffiti is a race thing. Graffiti straight up. It's the street shit. So I was a graffiti artist, but um, I I was into freestyle, you know, like Lisa Lisa, right? Shit like that. Lizette Melendez, like uh, like, like you know, Spanish Spanish culture music more. Uh-huh. Then then uh, I got into metal. Then I got into hardcore. Okay. So hardcore was like uh, eighty seven, but I was before that I was listening to like uh, the Force MDs, New Edition, and stuff like that. Right. Know? It was, it was kind of all over the place at that all time. Over, a lot of influences coming in. Queens. Right. I'm from Jackson Heights, Queens. So the mecca of the world. Most uh, populated, like, uh, different cultures in one area is Jackson Heights and Ginsburg World Records. Okay. So. Amazing. What what was the, the hardcore shit that you were first drawn to? Like, what, what bands or what shows? Uh, and... Agnostic Front. Okay. Chromax, Agnostic Front, Murphy's Law. Stuff like that. And when you look back at that, does it feel like, holy fuck, you were just born lucky as fuck to be around for such a crazy era? Uh, when I went to school, I was in junior high school, uh, Jimmy Gestapo's brother from Memphis Law, John, was in my class, eighth grade, and we stole Jimmy's uh, weed in manila envelopes. This is the 80s, 85. Right. So I didn't even know what Harker was, but we were stealing his weed. Then, mm. I, then he became, like, we're like brothers now. Right. His older brother's like my older brother, I think so. Definitely. So. And so you start going to these shows, and like, what what did you feel like was the thing, like, looking back at your younger self now, what, what do you feel like it was that, that the, just really drew you in there? The violence. Really? Primarily, even brother, before brother, the music? <laughs> yeah, the violence. The brother, it's like um, when metal band, when you see like Iron Maiden and shit like that, you're in the blue seats, you can't afford it, they don't even care about you. But if you see like an Oscar Front and your CBGBs, you're right, right here. Yeah. And at the end, he, the, the singer come up and be like, "Yo, what's up?" You mean? So, and in New York City, it's way different. Boston, it's like it's all mixed. You mm-hmm. mean most of us are, are Latino? You mean? Right. So, so people always think it's like a like a white boy shit. You know what I mean like, but we're, 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 it's all mixed and no one cared. You know what I mean? Right. So. That's the coolest thing. That's an interesting thing about that, because like I always used to hear like when you really look at like New York City, like yeah. hardcore bands that like a lot of them come from Long Island or Connecticut or yeah. Jersey, because it's like if you live in the projects or whatever, it's gonna be pretty difficult for you to like afford equipment. Never mind have a practice space. Yeah. Like if you live in close yeah. quarters with people like practicing and shit, it's just not gonna be that easy. Also, if I think that like a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes like if you, if you grow up in the projects. And you dress like a fucking white boy. Yeah. They can, they'll be like, yo, what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like a lot of, that's a lot of kids are like misfits. And they, they find they find the music to belong to something. You know what I mean? Like some some people go do the rave stuff. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And our, our thing was hardcore. That was like the darkest time that I can think of in pop culture. It was when it felt like EDM was going to just take over everything. <laughs> 
I was hurt. Like <laughs> deep down inside, I was just like, man, did I really like invest my whole life being interested in rap music just for this fucking EDM shit to take over this soulless trash? You know what's even crazy? A lot of people in the punk scene became into the EDM scene. Like, uh, uh, what's that girl? The guy, the, we got to hunt them down and just take the, them the out. Kid, the, the guy that died, smack my bitch up. Oh, uh, the, the dude from Prodigy. Prodigy, like, like that dude's a punk rock guy. But right. They they did so much drugs and stuff, and they they started going to the rave thing. You know? But when I look back at like the, I watched like documentaries about like UK techno and all yeah, that shit. Like yeah. that actually seemed like a pretty dope yeah. scene that they were like super passionate about and stuff. Yeah. Like I always just when I, I'm talking more like the era like 2011, 2012 when it started to be like all these Vegas EDM DJs are like taking over <laughs> yeah, the world yeah. and like they're the biggest stars making and I, money. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's when it really kind of seemed whack to me. That's some crazy shit. But so, do you know right away like that you really wanted to like dedicate your life to hardcore when you first started going to shows like that, or like how did you adapt to this? At, at first, it was like uh, music was like I never sang or anything like that. The first time I did Crown Thorns, uh, I just went in. I, I never sang to sing the 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 EP Train Your Blues, and we did that at Rockaway Beach, and it was like like going from Queens. All the way to Rockway doing that, and it was like Rockway, Rockway's fucked up. So mm. like doing that, singing, then I, then I, just uh, it was just natural. I mean, like the Starhead stuff. I was like going on tour. We toured hard. We mm. toured the world at least ten times over, man. And right. So, so it is pretty wild when you look back at that. How many like there's so many hardcore bands that realistically will just spend years and years and years of touring and yeah. not playing huge shows no. by any means, but, but just really holding it down. But in Europe. It's like when mm. I play Europe. It's like we play a tent, be like five thousand people in festivals. You mean right? Like I play. I remember playing. It's like uh, Buzu Bantons in another tent. Uh, uh, Destiny Child's over there. You know, the the Dilate Peoples over there. So it was kind of cool. You mean? Wow. So, but that, is it weird performing to like audiences that are almost like no percentage like traditional hardcore kids the way that you're used to? <laughs> it, it, the Europeans really love it. Mm. It's like it's like, it, it's like Japan. They really love it. And anything underground, cultural, like graffiti, mm. or reggae, they love. You know what I mean? So they, you walk into Japan to be like a roster, a Japanese roster, or a girl just like a, a, a homegirl for the Fijis, mm. uh, the, the Fujis, you know, Lauren Hill, but she they don't speak English. It's yeah. really weird sometimes. When so. I was in Japan, it was amazing to me that everybody wanted to show me their fucking lowriders. Yeah. They, <laughs> it's, they, they either do that culture or they want to be like a... Like like um like like like, like the Fujis. It's just really weird. Yeah. yeah, they don't have no concept of like cultural appropriation. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Which is great, I think, because like, why the fuck wouldn't they do it on the other side of the world? Do whatever you want with all this shit that we came up with. I went to a club called Club Harlem in there, and I was bugging <laughs> the fuck out. I was like, just like, what the fuck is going on here? You know? Yeah. So, but like, I used to live in Astoria, and there was a spot around the corner called Boston Pizza. For real? And I was just like, what the fuck are you doing? This oh. has nothing to do with what pizza is like in Boston. I went to school in the story. I went to junior high school 10 and Bryan High School. Okay. I lived on Steinway and Broadway for oh, a few sure. years there. See, this, see, what year is this? Mm, 2004. Okay. The story back in the days was ill, like in the 80s. Right. So all the Vietnam vets went there for low, ho- low, low income housing. Right. So all the kids were, you know, went to school with me, and then all the kids would Kid followers beat them, where they're all fucked up. I mean, so really, yeah. Well, well, That's a nice ass area now, huh? Yeah, beautiful now. Right. Yeah. So okay, when when did you when did the term or the the acronym DMS begin? Oh shit! Because is that before the bands and shit? I'm yeah. gonna ask you about this shit more than other people because right, I, I, I feel I'll like tell, tell I feel like I have no reason not to just ask you. I'm curious if you want to take the fifth, it's fine. But no, I'm just listen, gonna ask. I'll, I'm, I'm truthful. I did, like it's people. There was like. You get, I, Ask me anything. Let's okay. go. So DMS started in 86 as a graffiti crew. Oh, okay, okay. So it started with um, Scotty Banks, who just got out of jail and did 26 years for murder. He's out now. He's retired. And uh, Jir. So Scotty, Scotty's black. Okay. Right? And Jir is Irish. Uh-huh. So a white boy and a black dude, they started. Okay. Yeah. And it was a graffiti crew. Or graffiti crew, yeah. And it stood for what originally? Doc Martin Skinheads. Oh, okay. So we all mix. Everyone's a, 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 a different thing. Like, people hear skinheads, they think it's like, oh, in the West Coast, Nazis, everything. We had beef with Nazis. We would, we would beat the shit out of Nazis every fucking day. It was like a, a thing we did. And we took what we, what, when we first came to the scene, the older dudes had a lot of, like, a lot of Nazi dudes there. And we fucked them up, and that was it. We cleared, we so they, they were just kind of, like, tolerating them being they, around? Yeah, it wasn't yeah, some yeah. shit where they were going to really no, fuck no, them up? No, they, no. They, they, they're like, oh, he's cool, whatever. But then we came, you know, we fucked them up, and that was it. Right. And we a lot of people got fucked up really bad. I mean, like, 
So we're, we're street kids, so like we didn't give a fuck. People got stabbed, beaten, hit bats, crowbars, everything. Were you like surrounded by like because people always talk about how gnarly New York City was in general around that time period? Was it like horrible when you look back at it? All right, uh, from going from Queens on the train to the Lower East Side, which is was so fucked, it was like Beirut back then. You mean no? It's like the South Bronx. No one gave a fuck. Right. So going from Queens on the train to the city. Going through different neighborhoods and plus you graffiti right so we had beef with everyone so we had beef with everyone in the 80s right so going there going to the show leaving the show you get killed leaving the show just in the neighborhood mm. low east side so oh the only thing low east side was all puerto ricans and, and punk rockers right in the 80s that's it yeah like i had friends who uh lived in like fucking uh Sheepside bay and shit yeah, and they were bike yeah they were bike riders though so they would have to like go to new york city and they're yeah. riding their bike through all of it and they said that it wasn't that bad riding your bike through that area but then by the time you get to like bed williamsburg area fucked up you had to just sprint pedal as fast as you fucking could don't stop at any red lights because it was like a fucking war zone in that part of brooklyn well well parts of brooklyn flatbush crown heights Fucked up, but but now the hipsters are moving everywhere. Oh, so yeah. it's like even the, the Bronx, uh, they won't go to East New York. East New York's still gully. Yeah, you know, so, for the time being. For the time being, it's, but I, if they do, I give them credit. Right. You know, if they could take that, if they could take out. that, like give them a pass, <laughs> let them go, bro. It's like it's fucked up. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. But so when when you were doing graffiti around that time, what was graffiti to you? Was it primarily just like tagging around New York, or were you like piecing on trains? And and how far did you take it? My thing was. Uh, I didn't care about anything. I mean, my thing was like just getting up all over the streets. I mean, and beef. It was mm. all beef. I, my my partner in crime was uh, MQDMS, who was the king of graffiti. He's like, all over the world. Right. And we had beef for everyone. And when people saw us, they didn't know what we were. They're like, yo, is he's acting this? They're, oh, they white? What they, they saw they, but the DMS team really threw them out too. Right. So, but we got mad respect in the graffiti world. For sure. In the street world, we got mad respect. So like, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's this is my life. It's not. It's, I don't you know, like. I don't fake fake the fun for anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's oh. always kind of hard for me to explain because I have so many friends out here who are like LA dudes yeah. who grew up in like the LA gangbanging yeah. world, which is so specific. They don't really give a fuck about what people are doing. It's like it's always kind of weird for me to explain. Like, nah, I grew up going to hardcore shows, and they're like basically like white gangs not that there weren't yeah. other races as well but yeah. it was kind of like the other side of yeah. that and it's like kind of hard for a lot of people i associate with now to like understand that that world it's, 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 you know what to bring that world together the punk rock because like the, in la the suicidals were punk rock and the and the lads were punk rock gangs you right. mean? and unity they're still out here you know what I mean so like they're, they're, all those dudes all when i came out to L.A., I came out here, and I started DMS chapter out here in L.A. Uh -huh. and we got dudes from all different, from State Street, from uh, Quanton, from fucking uh, 18th Street, all retired dudes from there, became DMS. Really? So, yeah, so, like, we're, we're pretty big out here. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, like, uh, all right, when, when, when did, so Crown of Thorns was the first band? Crown of Thorns, 1993 we started. 1993. Yeah. So you were just a fan up, up before that, or? I played bass in a band called Discipline, but it, it it was our first show, only show we had played Discipline was Boston. Really? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I played the Rat a few times, and then, but Crown Thorns was my like, everyone loves Crown Thorns. You know? Right. So Scarhead is more street shit. Yeah. Was yeah. there like a visible like New York versus Boston sort of feud at that time, or does that take years yeah, to I, sort of prop up? You know, it's funny because I, I, I would I would go back and forth to Brockton. Mm -hmm. uh, the Boston Mike, who was in Scarhead, is from Brockton. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they call him Boston Mike. It should be Brockton Mike, but <laughs> rest in peace. Uh, yeah. And uh, we always had uh, friends in, in Boston. We have a DMS chapter in Boston, so all the Boston cats were cool with me. I mean, was that always like that, though, that there was DMS dudes in Boston? Uh, 95. Okay, because when I was going to shows in Boston a lot in like early 2000s and shit, it was very much told to me, don't even joke about having a crew. Oh, because the FSU was out there. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> just don't even don't even have a crew. Don't joke around about <laughs> yeah. it. Don't fucking make it a little like jokey, like internet thing because yeah. it's just not going to be tolerated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At some yeah. point, somebody's going to beat your ass. Yeah. But it's funny because uh, the, the head guy, uh, Nathan Elgin Bell, yeah. you know, it's like I met him in '89. We, we we're boys. I mean, mm. so the older FSU guys were always been boys. I mean, right. there might have been some little here and there, some little things beef that happens between 
crew members, you know, you get two top dogs in the room together, something's gonna happen, no matter what. Right. So, you know how it is, so the, the hardcore, the, they, they, say, they fuck the same girl, or fucking, the, this guy looked at me, it's always over a girl, you know that. Yeah. So There's only so many to go around in yeah, hardcore. So, <laughs> and you've seen the girls in hardcore, they're fucked up looking, so. Most of my, you know. Well, most the mosh of, pit, man, most they get their nose broken. Most of the bitches are fucking fucked up, you know, like, like I, that's why I got my girl. <laughs> How long have you guys been together? How long, babe? Almost, it's almost six years. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so, yeah. So. How did you land her, man? You, you, you're, you're pretty grizzled. She looks kind of like a spring chicken. It's, 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 it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you, all right, so like at some point, you just decided that you wanted to do Scarhead, which to me, like that, I, I listened to uh, Crown of Thorns a little bit and stuff, yeah. but to me, Scarhead was always just like a band that I really fuck with. Because, like, my, my favorite Boston hardcore band is always Blood for Blood. Oh, for real? Okay. Just because I, I, I twirled those I, guys so many times. Right. I love, like, the, the, the fact that it's more, you know, there's more rhythm to it yeah. that, like, you can Punch understand. Punch Rob sings. Yeah, you can understand the yeah. vocals better. It's like, they're, like, talking about real shit. Like, I was, that's one thing I never liked about hardcore is I felt like people's lyrics were just too fucking yeah. generic and just sort Stare of. me in the back. You yeah, know, so this is yeah. bullshit. And I always like that about you guys that you're like actually putting your lives in the fucking yeah. songs and talking about the shit that was important to you. Yeah. But so what what was like the brainstorming behind the scenes before Scarhead, Scarhead became a thing? Like what was the vision? No, the vision was uh check this out. We do, we, first of all, it was like basically put together by my manager who was doing Crown Thorns, Vaughn Lewis. Mm. He he manages Kill Switch Engage, all these bands. Uh, and the poor guy used to manage us and it was like it's hell, the poor guy. We gave him hell, man. Mm. We didn't. We went on tour with so many people, but we would, we would get in fights. We get thrown off tours. We've been, like, we've been thrown off the Motorhead tour. They threw us off. And stuff Heard like that, that story, yeah. So it's like, I uh, basically when when Boston Mike left Scarhead, Puerto Rican Mike came in. Okay. And it, 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 the shit just went too crazy. It was like, like it was like, like we were fighting every day. Um, but we would get stopped in every border. So I would get, to, we got detained in Canada twice. I mean, it's like, this, this is crazy shit. Right. So, but Scarhead started in 98. Okay. That's it. That, well, just the, real, the first thing we did was uh, in 95, we did an EP, but it was like a full project. But we started going on tour in real band in 98. Okay. Yeah. And was like Thug Core already thug core, a yeah. term? Thug in- Core. No, we th- we, th- we created that Thug Core. Right. So. And so, well, what was that conversation like about what you wanted to get across through that band that hadn't really been done in hardcore yet? You know what's fucked up? It was just like our life uh, reflected. That's how we are. You know what I mean, a lot of these guys talk all this shit, whatever. And, and it's it's like when um, usually Scar fans love it because we're real. You know what I mean, mm. it's like when you like a, a certain MC and you're like, oh. He's dope, but I can't, like, I'll slap the shit out of him. So I, I can't have an MC I love and mm. slap the shit up. You know what I mean? Like, like my favorite MC is Cool G Rap. Right. right. So you know no one's going to slap Cool G Rap. Right? Yeah. But you see all these MCs are hard or whatever, and then once when you slap their face, you see them crying, like, I can't listen to you anymore. Yeah, I mean, that that is kind of a weird thing. It's like, in rap, at least now, it's very much like, if you're going to be talking tough, if you're going to be talking street shit, you pretty much have to fucking really be doing that because yep. otherwise it's, it's tough to be out here saying I'm going to shoot 10 people whatever and you're just not that guy like in hip hop your card is getting pulled pretty pulled fucking hard. fast and I grew up we you know we would go to uh, Bill Spector is a friend of mine he used to do these big clubs called Sheets of Pillows so Stretch Armstrong Stretch and Barbito you know, they, they were DJ Hi, My Mighty My DJ and Mark Ronson, all these guys, famous fucking hip hop dudes, and we would go there and we'd destroy the fucking clubs. So, but really, so we were, like most of these rappers, we used to rob the shit out of them. Mm. They know it. They, 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 if you say my name, say Ezek, they'll be like, oh shit, you know what I mean like right. So it's but it's funny. A lot of those rap guys, there's a whole bunch of rap dudes who are real and 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 should be bigger than they are. The dudes, the old school dudes like uh, Royal Flush, Joe Fado. Uh, um, Lars Professor, dudes mm. like that, Tragedy Gaddafi, those are like real dudes. I mean, Norm Yeager, those are real dudes, you know what I mean? Yeah. They get respect, and that's why people respect them. Mm. But a lot of dudes, it's like, ah, uh, you know what I mean? I, couldn't, I can't get into a lot of rap dudes who's like, don't, don't do it for me, don't move me, you know what I mean? Right. So it's good. But I mean, would you say that that's true of, like, that in hardcore, a lot of the greatest <laughs> hardcore bands of all time, realistically, yeah. were talking like they were super fucking tough yeah, and yeah. were not at all? Well, th- I grew up with the, the real deal. The Cro-Mags are tough, and that's yeah. the front's tough, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Murphy's Law, Jimmy's a tough dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sheer Terror, tough, you know what I mean? Right. Some of these dudes are... Uh, 
um, Scott Vogel from Terra is my boy, and he I always, he loves hardcore so much, and I always tell him stories of the guys that slap in hardcore. And he's like, please don't tell me that. Like, <laughs> but I love telling him that. I'm like, that guy's a bitch. You Breaking know? your yeah, fucking yeah, bubble. Yeah, like like, like it's, but, but it's funny. Sometimes people don't understand. Like these these groups, uh, they're just normal people. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, but I was a kid looking at y'all like you're the craziest motherfuckers on earth. Like, how are they not in prison, bro? These dudes are out of control. If, if, if Scarhead was torn me like we did back then, we'd be in jail like two seconds. Really? It, 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 we'd be like, like it, we had, we were going to tour and we had Interpol and uh, pull us over and be like, yo, we're looking for so and so in DMS, America's Most Wanted. And, and we'd be like, whatever. Right. And, uh, we have feds coming to the thing looking for us. Dudes were like, we had people in our in our team, our, our family that were on the run, for, really, for like like for a long time. So you were getting like pulled over by the cops in New York City as well, and, and we, were they and they were concerned about DMS. This is the whole thing okay, to them. I, 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 I grew up with homicide cops coming to our house all the time. Really? And my, my father was a cop. Yeah. My father one time made me surrender myself for for attempted murder thing, and uh, and went in there. And they, they they did me dirty, but fucking uh, everything came up. The, the, the two people that, that, that so I supposedly stabbed and the other guy but fucked up, both uh, didn't were actually cool and didn't press charges when it came down to it. Wow. So, but still, that like those are like and they were hardcore kids. They're real people, street kids, you know. So, right. but you know, if it could have gone the other way, you know what I mean. Did your dad help you get out of a lot of shit at that time in your life? No, they were hanging the phone. If I got locked up, my father and mother, my mother hanging the phone with me. My mother's a straight Puerto Rican, like, you know, go fuck yourself. You know what you're doing. Don't come to me for help. Right. So, when you look at like how you led your life, do you think a lot of it was sort of like a reaction to growing up around your dad being in the, in the co- being a cop and having this <laughs> law and order around you? I, I, most most cop sons are fucked up. Really? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> in New York City, yeah, I know a lot of guys. Like, I know a lot of guys who follow the cops are fucked up. Because the story of your life is basically like you just ran to <laughs> all the burning buildings you could find. I'm like, let me just get into all the grimiest <laughs> shit that I can. And, yeah, and, and, and I was so young, I didn't understand. I didn't, I didn't understand any of that. Mm. And it's sad too, being at that my age, and not like like I should have I should have went to school. Should have got a fucking. Uh, a uh, real job, you mean? Mm. I should have went that path, and they should have been like, "Hey, to do this." But my father was kind of cool. You know? Like he told me one time, he's like, "I almost got a tattoo once in the army." And I go, "What happened?" He's like, uh, "We went to the tattoo shop, and, and my, my friends are assholes. I got tattoos. That's it. Mm. And I, and I, he didn't get a tattoo, so he was like, he was like, whatever. He goes, if you're gonna do something, make sure no 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 one is around there to see what you do. That's his, his advice to me." That's great advice. Hard Although, advice. It's, it's hard to advice to follow in this day and age with cameras oh, everywhere. Now, yeah, but back then he said, like, uh, like, "I'd be like, how, how I do that? Just go in the alleyway, hit him with a brick." That's what he said to me. Really? Make sure no one's around. Wow. Damn. When I think about it, like when I, wa- I was like, you know, the YouTube algorithm. When you're watching Danny Diablo interviews, it also wants to suggest that you watch all these fucking fights like, from every <laughs> show. <laughs> Punk rocker up. gets beat up by skinheads at this show, etc. Oh, I'm man. getting sucked into it. It's like I'm fucking. I gotta go to bed. I'm trying to finish watching this shit, and I'm it's just like up. seeing all these videos I want to watch in the sidebar. And I'm just looking at these kids and just watching this dynamic play out, where you know a dude's moshing and he fucking kicks somebody in the fucking head, and that kid obviously walks over and he kicks the dude back, and then him and his ten of his friends beat Chump the fuck out of, out of rat pack. You know, and then I'm, I'm watching it just thinking like, bro, these kids, a lot of them, I think, are like attracted to hardcore because it just gives them a venue by which they can sort of like express the violence Minus. that they want to take part in by default. And it, it creates like an environment where they can kind of do it. And it's not, you know, going to get them thrown in jail like yeah. they might if they beat somebody up at a football game or something. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. They, they go there all the matinee. You all, all week, you're a kid. All week, you're, you're dealing with your parents and fucking bullshit in school. Get that one day to go crazy. Mm. It's like, a, it's a actually, well, if you go do a football, if you're a football player, you get you get hurt more, more as a football player than going to the pit. Mm. Think about that. Yeah, like I, I uh, you know, when you, and, and it's like you really kind of have to be in it for it to make sense to you because I remember like at one point not going to a show for a couple of years and then going to a show, I'm standing yeah. there and then all of a sudden, you know, the band starts, I'm, I'm just watching. All of a sudden somebody's like just spin kicks and fucking hits me in the head and I just am like, 
what the fuck am I doing here? Like, I haven't been in this environment in a couple of years. What, what know, kind of human being would subject themselves to this? Or I, or I watched them like warm up. I'm like, these kids are fucking retards. Yeah. Like, like, what the hell is going on? Like, it just like freaks me out sometimes. Eh? Yeah, because I kind of part of me can't help but view it from like a normie perspective yeah. when I'm looking at a video of a bunch of kids two stepping and then like somebody's like <laughs> windmilling around hitting people and like I, I'm with so many people in my life that don't understand hardcore and I'm looking at. Kind of from their perspective, like yeah, I don't know, I, I don't know what I could possibly say to make sense of this too. One time, I uh, uh, I played the Tramps in New York City, and um, my brought my mother and my father. Everyone was around my mother, and uh, after I performed, I was like, oh, my mother said, oh, Danny was great. And I looked at my father, he turned to me, and goes, you're not gonna make money in this. And left. <laughs> and I was like, that, that's all he said to me. I was like, this motherfucker. And like, but I guess he's just that, in his own way, he's telling me from the heart, like, you know, like. You know, he, this is how it is. But I mean, was there any connection in your mind between like wanting to be in a badass hardcore band and wanting to make money or are these like totally separate things? Because if you're a graffiti kid, yeah. I mean, you're just, you're not thinking about making money from this. No, my thing is this. Um, I thought at one point with doing Danny Diablo, I mm. could make money. Like I was like, all right, I'm going to branch out, do the mix the hip hop with the, with the rock and stuff. And I got signed by Hell Cat, Travis Barker signing me first. Right. And then, Tim Armstrong produced my stuff, and it was like. But that's later. That's yeah, that's not you as yeah. like a child. You oh, know? child. No, I, I just wanted. I just wanted to get, go fucking. Like I was like a Viking. Yeah. Know, like going on those uh, other fucking uh, cities, rape pillage. I was like, ah, money. You know, like like it was crazy. Fight. It was crazy. It really was like that. It was like that. It was like <laughs> a traveling zoo. That's what it was like. <laughs> yeah. It's just totally not about a business. It's no, just no. about going out and just having oh, these no. crazy ass experiences. We, At that point in your life, over time, you start to look at it like, we, okay, we, this is. I'm gonna try to make this work long. It would get so crazy that the, 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 we would be drinking, that the, we would fucking, we get paid in fucking uh, Coke. And it was like, yo, this kid was killed fucking three eight balls right now. It was like, right. it, it was crazy. It was, in a van, in a van with dudes that, that you, you want to strangle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But dude, so much of the fucking hardcore that I was like growing up around and shit yeah. was straight edge vegan yeah. and shit. Yeah. And you guys, you never went near, anywhere near any yeah, of that no, shit. No, but a call from Earth Crisis was my boy. Right. So we toured together with Earth Crisis all the time. And he would stand in the back and, and, and just wanted me to tell him stories all the time. He loved it. Really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. Wow, that's yeah. funny. But you never like you ever try to push him like, come on, just do a bump. No, no, no. no. <laughs> he, he's like a try to push the line. He's like he's a militant dude. When yeah, it comes that shit. But he wouldn't even joke around about it like that. No, he one time we picked us up and I was supposed to do uh, uh, go to the studio film. So he picked me up at, at a strip club and I was like, fuck it, me and Puerto Rican Mike, and we were all fucked up and we made him go through McDonald's to get his food. But he's like against meat and stuff. Yeah. But he had a uh, his songs about burning down McDonald's and yeah, shit. Yeah. So he's in the front and he had uh, like a, 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 a baby seat in the car in the front and we're in the back. So it looks like he's ordering for himself. <laughs> he probably was like <laughs> just looking around. Yeah. It was before thing. I'm like, yo, we taped this. And we, uh, it was funny, man. Then we went to his house and, he, and we slept on in the baby's room or something. We were, we were all fucked up and we went straight to the studio the next morning. Right. You feel like you ever like really pushed his patience though, because I've as a person who doesn't get fucked up yeah. besides smoking weed now, a lot of times when I'm around people who are drunk, I'm just like, bro, I want to fucking smash you over the head with a fucking listen, chair listen, right listen, now, listen, bro. Listen, I, I hate drunks. Mm. It's like when, it's like, yo, yo, how old are you, bro? I mean, like to me, it's like, yo, I, 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 that's the worst thing. When I was, if someone's drunk and I'm with my girl or something, and dudes look, I'm gonna tell you something straight up. Mm. No one gives a fuck about a dude with red hair. They, they, they see me red haired. Like, when I have my head shaved and all tattooed, they don't say anything. But I have red hair. Push, people push me. Like, it's, it's, it's weird, man. Really? Especially in New York. You know, like, I have beaten so many people. And like, well, it's so sad because I'm beating with a big red afro, beating some guy in the street. You know, right. Dragging him down the block naked. You know what I mean? Stripping him. <laughs> naked. So, so. When's the last time you're going to fight? Like two months ago. <laughs> 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 How bad are we talking? A little, got, little shutter match? I, or? I got a footage. I'll send it to you. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that. All right, definitely. Yeah. It, yeah. Was that a show? or it's, 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 some, Something had to happen. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So it was like a pre, no, prearranged someone thing? Someone taped it and they put the cure in back in. <laughs> they put it like a uh, Friday I'm in love. So it's even funnier. It's like someone sent this to me the other day. Have you got a lot better at uh, not overreacting when, when somebody... Challenges you at this point, or is it still an issue? But, uh, listen, I'm, if I'm with my lady, if I, if, 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 if I have to, I'm going in. But but the thing is, uh, it's hard for me. Yeah. I, I think, and that's when people sign me to labels, like Travis Barker signed me, 
and, uh, and tra- they all. Th- I love Travis Barker and uh, these guys, but I'm like, it's like a double-edged sword. And, like I could just flip any second. Like you said, a pimple in the corner. They probably look at me way worse than that. You mean like like really? But but Tim Armstrong, same thing. These guys signed me, and uh, like, I got street credibility, music. But it's like when you do business, you don't want to deal with that. Right. I, I have a record label. I don't want to deal with a guy who's like a young kid who's gonna go crazy. Who's gonna put my money into? Who could get locked up? Mm. You know what I mean? So I think about that. Yeah, I'm older now. You know what I mean? But when I was young, I didn't give a fuck. You could tell me anything. Right. Know? So. Yeah, this is, I've probably told this story on the podcast before, but th- when I went to White Trash Rob's house to interview him oh in God. his fucking attic in Salem, Massachusetts, <laughs> which is pretty <laughs> epic when I look back at it. Um, How I walked, was he fucked up? No, he was he was at a good point right, at that right, point. Right. But you know, he's talking about it, everything. But he was watching the UFC fight that yeah. night, and I said, I'm, he said something. And he's like, man, like. I could have never done this shit. He's like, these guys are tough as fuck. I'm a fucking pussy. And I'm like, what? I'm like so surprised because I'm like looking at him my whole life. It's like, yeah. this dude's hard as no, fuck. He, he's, he's, and he's like, why do you think I always had weapons on me and shit my whole life? He's like, I could have never fought like these fucking dudes. And that, that just like filled in so much of the shit that I was thinking about as a kid because I'm looking at dudes like you and him as yeah. being the baddest motherfuckers in the world. And it's just very interesting to me to see how the perspective on violence changes as you get older, you know? You know what? It's also, when you look, when I saw Roger and, the, and Billy Milano and SOD, they were like so big in large life. Then I'm like, look at them bigger than now. It's like, it's, it's to get older. You know I mean, but, right. but White Trash Rob, always to me, I always thought him as uh, the guy from Cheers on the bar, the North Cliff, the knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> I used to tell him all the time, he's like, hey, he knows every smart dude, man. That dude was a smart guy. Very. Uh, I know he was fucked up with drugs. I hope he's all right now. But mm. but, but uh, he's a talented dude too. His, like like guitar wise, songwriting, but but uh, yeah, those guys look at look at me like animal. You know, like mm. we, we would tour those guys and they'd be like, we, we we would fight everyone. Bounces everywhere we'd go, we go, we the bounces would just look at us. They had, they already knew who we were. You know mean right? So I I used to wear like pretend glasses and pretend to look different. And be, hey, you know, like this is so they won't fuck with me. You know mean like. But it'd be like, yo, fuck New York. And I mean, here it goes. You know? Right. You know, so. No, yeah, I was watching a lot of like old shows and stuff and just seeing the crowd beating the fuck out of the security. And I'm just sitting there wondering, <laughs> like, how is this allowed to continue? Yeah, like, why horrible. would this venue allow this to continue happening when their fucking staff is getting the shit beat out and of some them? Some of these, you know, bouncers are usually tough guys from the, from the, the, the neighborhood. They pretty much got to be. You have to be. Like, nowadays, uh, thank God for, like, I thank God for cameras now because like it puts me a little bit check. Mm, I mean, so that makes sense. Yeah, so. yeah, when you look at the hardcore scene now, like, does it feel the same? Like, how much different does it feel to you in comparison to that magic of? Because you, 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 you got into it at such an amazing time and I, 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 lived through so many amazing eras. I think um, uh, it's so sad because I love my fans. You know, the, the kid, my fans are true fans. I mean, they stick by me. I got the best man's world. But some of these kids now, the new kids, are pussies. And I, I, I don't know if you, I, I can't say what I want to say. And it's, mm. it's sad because I'm not into politics. I'm not into, like, I'm mixed. I, I don't give a fuck about anything. You, if you don't hurt women and children, you're cool with me. Mm. Right? Even like, like uh, this dude's like, there's mad racist people out there. And, uh, and, and they act like snakes. So people look at me that they won't stay in front of me, but they'll say something over there. You mean? Mm. You know at least when I look at a Nazi dude, I know why he, he hates me. Mm. So, but there's dudes that do business with a promoter. Then when I when I when I leave, like speak to nigga, you mean mm. like that's the dudes I don't like. You mean? Interesting, so. but yeah, I mean when you look at the hardcore, I mean this is like more me having like an online perspective. But when yeah. I look at the hardcore fans these days, sometimes it just feels like Jesus Christ, you guys all just got into this because you just want to be fucking offended by everything Fending, and just talk about the intricacies of what's <laughs> offending you today and shit. I'm like, bro, this is so the opposite of like what it, it I thought was yeah. tight about hardcore when I got into it. Yeah, no, no politics. No, it's like. When I was young, you hate the world, man, and you don't understand. You hate your parents. That's why you mm-hmm. went to Harvard. Get away from everything. Now these guys are like into politics and talking about stuff. You know, oh, you said this five years ago. Like, what the fuck, man? You know, it's, like, it's crazy. I, right. I got to watch how the way I speak. But the way I speak, I'm from Queens. I speak a certain way. You know what I mean? Right. And that, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, no one's going to tell me whatever. But some of these people are like, oh, you can't say that. You know, they're like, oh, they, they, oh, they think I'm white? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, Look at my mother, you fucking retard. You know, like, they, they don't think I'm like... It's weird. It's just weird shit, bro. That's so crazy. It's, like, it's fucked up. And especially for you as somebody who's like put so many decades of yourself well, into working, this. Yeah, to then my to life. have people try to question you when you're like, I got a fucking, what did you say your mom's black? Yeah, my mom's Puerto Rican. I mean, that's like, so crazy. You know, come on. It, it, it retarded these people. Like, that's crazy. Ah, fuck. fuck it. Um, yeah, but like, 
I mean, how how would you say that your uh, excitement about hardcore is has, has maintained itself? Because it's I, I always see like this pattern, like when I was going to shows, where you would see like kids who just go to shows every fucking uh, every, every day, week. and that's they're just doing it and doing it and doing it. But like the shelf life on that feels like it's only so long because then you have the dudes who are in bands and they start to like actually be doing something productive yeah, with yeah. it and they kind of become like the elder statesmen of it and stuff but then those same dudes I feel like a, a large percentage of them kind of lose that enthusiasm of just well, going to shows just to watch this is what happens you, you perform perform you don't get the money or the recognition you're supposed to and yeah. people just like then you got new kids that, that don't care anymore or mm -hmm. for other reasons you know what I mean people burn out on it kind of fast because yeah. they're not they realize like I'm never gonna like really have a a, a, a long term Thing going with this, right? Or they go to just go to college. Yeah, <laughs> just that does it. Yeah, college and they get a real job. That's it. What do you think it kept you so fucking in love with it after all these years, though? Uh, the, the music, the, the, the camaraderie, the, the brotherhood, and just like uh, what else I'm fucking doing? Become a fucking uh, uh, brain surgeon? Look at me. <laughs> Either this or I collect money. Right. You know, but if you owe me money, you owe my uh, collect money for my my, my boy. You know? That's what that's what you. Your mind goes to yeah, it's like I would yeah, be basically yeah. a fucking bounty hunter. Just I, mean, I do construction. I do construction. Like I, I grew up with people in my neighborhood who are don't laugh at my DMS stuff. They, they, they're on another level, really, of something else. And they like DMS. Uh, they, we make jokes about it, but they, those dudes. If something goes really bad in my life, I go to those dudes. Really, I have a sit down. That's it. You know? Oh well. Wow. So that's how life is. You know? So these guys too. This and that, guns and shit. I don't give a fuck about that, man. Right. Were you running around with guns in the 80s and 90s and shit? I, I don't like guns. Mm. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like, I don't like guns. <laughs> That's just an aesthetic. <laughs> but yeah, it's all for show. But what, you always have brass knuckles and knives and shit on you back in the day? I've been stabbed so many times. Really? That, that was normal I, shit? I just like, like, I got stabbed. When's the last time? When's the last time I got stabbed, man? Oh, two, like, a year and a half ago I got stabbed? Some guy was beating his, uh, his girl, and I stepped in and said, hey, yo, don't do that, and the guy stabbed me up. So the guy stabbed me uh, twice, here and here. Holy fuck. So Bad? Bad. You know, I, I beat him so bad, but it was so bad, it was fucked up. And then the girl started chasing me, <laughs> the one I protected from me. Was, he was fucked up his girl, and no one was doing nothing. And you're that dude who, if you see something going on that you don't I like, stopped it, but you're, I, you're getting I, I, in there. But I, but the thing is, my father told me never get involved with, with a boyfriend and girlfriend fight because they'll turn on you uh. all the time. So, but I knew it. And I'll do it again too. But he he was punching. I fucked him up. But it was like the guy stabbed me. I sliced, sliced his face. One of my boys was walking down. One of my boys was walking down from Louis side and threw. And he was like, "Yo, E," threw a fucking box cut of me. I cut the guy in the face. It was fucked up. Holy shit. Yeah. So, but. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. like you, I, you didn't end up doing much time throughout your life? I've been, I've been fucking locked up a few times, but never like two weeks the most. Really? Yeah. What did what, they get you for, like the, the two weeks one? Attempted murder. Really? Yeah. Can you tell that story? Oh, my God. Yeah, I can tell that story. Let's go. <laughs> it's been a while. It's man. been a while, guys. Well, this was a long time ago. Come on. All right, so uh, <laughs> there's, well, this is fucked up. He's like, I'm, there's a dude, I'm gonna say his name, but he was a fucking hard dude from Brooklyn. And, and um, whatever, he used to prank my mom's house and stuff like that, to talk shit, whatever. And something happened, and I was working as a bouncer at Coney Island High, New Year's Eve. He got stabbed up, he, he went back home, he was so drunk, they almost died in bed. So but before he, he, that's when he put him in the ambulance, he said my name. So. Two years, late, two years later, I beat this guy named Nicky X who's playing a guitar for me. Mm. He robbed, uh, we're on tour, he was a crackhead. He robbed my, this lady's house for like, uh, $50 worth of crack. For, he sold $50,000 worth of jewelry for $50 worth of crack. Oh my God. So I found out, I played a show, well, Crown Thorn to Suicide Tendencies. After the show, I was like, yo, what's up? And I beat him down. I, I broke this dude's shit so bad. And uh, then he went back and got the fucking, uh, he, I fucked him up. He even got paid for fucking the, the, the show and left. I caught him out there, beat him, broke his head at a bar. They locked me up for that. For, that's I had to give myself for both of them. Wow. So that, that was it. But that dude is in jail now for killing someone, ran, ran, ran someone over. And he oh, got his shit. neck broken, too. Wow. So so you uh, you ended up having to fight those cases? or, or how did They, they go dropped him. They just dropped him? Dropped both of them. Wow. So, yeah. 
You ever feel like maybe you got a horseshoe up your ass? You got a little too lucky in this life? Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, well, maybe uh, they, they, they didn't go for a reason. Yeah. You were meant to be here. I meant to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you always uh, also in love with rap, or did you did you see rap and hardcore as being like competing things, or just things that you just loved at the same time? I was, I was into rap way before hardcore, and um, I always loved rap. You know, it's my old school rap. I love like like the Large Professor stuff mm. like that. You know, so like uh, CNN stuff from, like the, the like nineties, eighties. Yeah, MC Shan. Definitely, but was it always lurking around in your head like I'm gonna try to combine these two? Yeah, it's right. Yeah. But I think Star was more like rock. Right? There's more, the Dan Diab was more hard with the hip hop beats. You know I mean, so. Mm. But like, because I know you had this song about Fred, Fred Durst at oh, a yeah. certain point. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, but, oh. but were you. Oh. Take me back to Danny Diablo observing oh. new metal when, yeah. it's, when it's at its oh. height, <laughs> late 90s type shit. I, I was just man at the, the, the Yankee hat. If you're not from New York City, you wear a Yankee hat, you mm. especially a red one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then the, the host. I, I, I feel bad. Sorry, Fred Durst. I feel bad because DJ Lethal is my boy. Okay. You know what I mean? But when you look back, have you seen him since? Who? You ever see Fred Durst around? No, but I chill with Lethal all the time. Okay. Yeah. But if you were in the same room as Fred Durst, you think that would. I don't know. I, I, it seems I, like he's probably past that at no, some point. What's he going to do anyway? Yeah, <laughs> <what's> he <gonna laughs> hey, I want to talk to you outside. <laughs> Me and Wes. Yo, hold on a second. <laughs> Yo, I remember seeing a picture of him just the other day where he yeah. he, fully, he looks like a Gray, fucking like, billy yeah, goat yeah, or yeah. some shit, bro. His hair and his beard. and like He, but, don't, he don't look subculture at all no more. But he has a lot of money. So he yeah. made more, more money than I do, bro. That's a good point. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he probably fuck Britney Spears, too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll give him that. Um, but free yeah. Britney. Yeah, free Britney. No, free Britney. dude, lock her up. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble. I keep saying that on here. I just keep waiting for somebody to hear and get mad. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, from your perspective at that time, though, were you, like, mortified by new metal? Like, because this is kind of like yeah. a bastardization of yeah, these two yeah. genres you love, they, right? They fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was young enough. I was, like, 12. I was like, this shit is tight. And then within like a year or two, I was like, no, hate breed. Yeah, Fuck this shit. Yeah, that's fun. That's what I hate breed. Jamie Johnson was my manager at one point. Really? And I, I fucked his, He was not sober at the time. Then he got sober after managing me. So. <laughs> and he was like, fuck this. Yeah. I can't manage this yeah, guy he's like, sober. This, guy, he's, this guy's a fucking animal. <laughs> so. What does Danny Diablo's manager do at that point in time? He was just lining up tour dates and shit like that? or <sighs> Just keeping me out of jail, bro. Mm. Literally just yeah. managing your life, not your career so much. <laughs> my life, I mean, he would take me with him. So I, I would have to go to MTV when he's doing the thing. Right. I would wait for him, the headbangers ball, it was crazy. But he's a, Jamie Joshua, I love you, bro. Yeah. Hey, bro, I, love, I love Jamie. He's someone who's aged very well on this thing. You yeah. know, like he's, he's smart. He maximized every part smart. of that shit. Smart. He's a smart, like he's a smart, like like he's he's white as fuck too. He's like a white, white guy. I always look at him like, you are like children of corn white. Yeah. yeah. I listened to a shitload of his podcast years ago. He's dope. Yeah, he's killing it. Shout out to him. But uh, yeah, all right. So then at a certain point, like, wh what was the mind state behind, uh, behind? well, with Scarhead, you had like a lot of like guest vocalists yeah, and shit yeah, yeah. too, which I always thought was very like, cool. you know, yeah, that yeah. was like hip hop yeah. influence. Like, but I hadn't really features, seen it done features, in hardcore. Yeah. 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 But like, w was that like an intentional thing? Like we're going to kind of yeah, try know, to embed that in, in I, the rest I thought, of music too? I do two, two vocals, but uh, my thing is, uh, Scar is more flashy and like more ignorant. You know, oh, like, big uh, time, like, yeah. Like, you can tell we're Puerto Ricans when we do our, our music <laughs> there, the way we are. Like, we, we are fucking like, uh, like Puerto Rican Mike was one of the illest rappers in the world and but he did not give a fuck like like i always say that like he would destroy stuff i was always looking at him and say you could be so much better he's like i don't give a fuck mm. i'm like you are definitely a puerto rican from the bronx you just don't give a fuck you know? he is the bronx yeah it's fucked up for sure um shout out puerto rican mike so when, when did the conversation start about ice pick Jasta. real recognized real is like you like that that's the best song ever <laughs> That's like actually he the loves best it. He loves it too. song in the history yeah. of music, me, perhaps. Me, me and Ice T. Hell yeah, dude. That shit was. I was Shout just out to Ice T. Ice T. You know, was what, seriously. I love Ice T, and we became friends. Hmm. That's, that's my you know. Shout out to Ice T. He, you know, he's influenced me so much. I mean, so like, I, like, like, like dudes like that. Like, that's very rare in in, in our business. They're cool and fucking. I, I respect. You know? Yeah. So. 
Yeah, that's like one thing that you could kind of say about you guys is that like there's been very few people from hardcore that have been able to sort of like cross over cross to like over, making yeah. rappers understand that yeah. what they're doing Dude. is tight. And that's yeah. like one thing that you guys kind of like were able to get across that I feel like a lot of people have kind of struggled with. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It, it, I, I think it's very hard. Early days listening to rap, rock, it, it bothered me a lot. It wasn't done right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't uh, organic. It was like always forced to like, so, you know what I mean? So, but bands like Onyx, I loved it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, um, MOP does hard shit, man. I love MOP. I love Onyx. I mean, that's hard shit. It's still like to this day, though, feels like people never really figured out exactly. I mean, how it's got, you yeah, know, like how do we make these two genres work it's together? A little, it's a little off sometimes. Some of it's tight. Some of it's like kind of cringy, you know, like well, a lot of it's like really cringy and yeah. really hard to pull off, you know, <laughs> hard to take serious for sure. But I always feel like Scarhead was one of the best elements of Yo, it. You make, sure. Thank you so much. You make it like it's sometimes like. I got so many fans that tell me that, uh, of like, oh, yo, your music has uh, helped me out in life. And I'm like, yo, you are fucked up. My music <laughs> helped you in life. You are fucked up. I don't even, what's going on in your house, bro? You know what I mean? But I'm saying, but it, make, it, it keeps me going. That's the only thing that keeps me going. Really? Because I want to quit this shit all the time. Right? Right. Let me get the phone. You guys got my phone? Oh, thanks. Got some shit right down here and shit. But uh, yeah, like, is that, that's what you would say is kind of, keeps you in the game do you think that yeah. it's just like yeah. just your love for it just kind of keeps you from from being able to step away from it, it, it it's definitely love it's definitely not the fucking money you know? mm. so but now as i get older i'm doing other stuff i'm i, have, I got my own podcast yeah i started doing acting now i just uh, i did a movie with peter green really who was the craziest motherfucking in the world he was my roommate for five years do you end up getting cast as like the gang member yeah, yeah, which, I, which, I, which I, I love doing. So <laughs> <laughs> I look like a B, I, I dyed my hair last night. I look like a fucking B movie Albanian bad guy right now. Really? Look at this shit. You feel weird about having a normal oh. color beard? What, what color was it before? I'm, my, I'm a redhead. I try, oh, no, right, no one right. respects redhead, but I look like one of my my dyke Puerto Rican aunts with this hair like this. <sighs> So that's what I'm trying to look like. So, yeah, that's cool. You think nobody respects redheads? It's like one of the few no. groups. Get, 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 it's wait. okay to discriminate against. Listen, tell me, name a, a redhead person out. out, out, out Megadeth, Dame Mustaine, asshole. Right? <laughs> Carrot Top, asshole. Ron Howard, who gives a fuck? Malcolm X. Yeah, that's pretty hard. Does but that they, count? I don't but know. they killed him. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, think, think about it, right? No one. Fuck. I know. Sometimes I'll see somebody and their baby has red hair, and I'll just be like, Fuck. Oh, "That's why I, that's they're, they're why I, in for a lot. They got the world up against them, man." And I never heard the word "ginger" in my life until South Park. And people, I was like, "What the fuck's a ginger?" <laughs> so I'll fuck you up. Don't call me a ginger. What the fuck's that? You know? That must have been crazy. You know, that's why I fought all the time. These people are like, yo, look at your mother. Your mother. They'll be like, you're adopted. Your mother's a nigga. You you Jew. You spick. I'm like, what the fuck? All, all areas they hit me. You know what I mean? So like, I had to fight everyone. You know what's fucked up too is that. Ginger and the N word are the same letters, just rearranged. I played too much Scrabble in my life, but I can't help but think about that. I but never about that in my life. Bro. That's just like a weird coincidence that I don't really understand. But that's the weird how like that was like invented to be a slur for redheaded people, but like late in the game, like halfway through my life, I find out about Yo, that's that. That's fucked up. Uh, you know, people are fucked up. Right. When you diss Fred Durst, you rhymed puddle of mud and puddle of blood. I thought that was pretty fucking righteous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I, where do you even hear that shit? I just went on YouTube and I was just searched Danny Diablo, and by the time you get to like page three, there's some shit. <laughs> oh, what else? Well, come on, don't even tell me what to say. Nah, I mean, I was just, there's a lot of good stuff on that. I'm watching all these old performances and yeah. shit. You ever do that? You ever end up in the wormhole looking at your old shit on, on YouTube? You know, what's what my girl does to me now? I, I, uh, she goes, don't, people in the comments, well, I got a lot of people fucking like a be down, whatever. And, and I look at the comments, it just bothers me sometimes when people talk shit. Like, I can't do anything about it. It fucking hurt. It kills me inside. Mm. So I know people fucking right now, they're probably, fuck you now. You're like, but the thing is, like, but then I look at other people, other rappers stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, the, the kids nowadays destroy people. Mm. Like fat, they, I look at Fat Joe's shit, and Fat Joe's a real motherfucker. Mm. You know, Fat Joe's. I'm telling you right now, a lot of these kids don't know about Fat Joe. He's real, and they'd be like, you fat fucker. I'm like, oh shit. You know what I mean, like they would never say that to him in front of his face. No, and that, but that's like a very good uh, sign of 
how internet fluent somebody yeah. is because like my guy Wack 100 yeah. is like one of the most certified like OGs in LA yeah. and he will be in the comments and somebody calls him a bitch he's in the comments saying well blah blah blah, blah. your mom did this and like it's like yeah. he, he's still kind of in that mentality like I, he's spending all that time in prison I, I don't, don't want to get into that into that whole weird shit because like it's like I understand some of these people are like then I realized like my, you know who taught me a lot about that stuff Negro really Necro's my boy you know, shout out to Necro he was like how many people you beat down in your life how many guys girlfriends you fucked or to beat up the cousins they can't do anything to you so they're gonna get at you this way right. don't let them get at you yeah so I was like oh thank you Necro yeah I mean there's been times where you know somebody said something really nasty about me and it's like I don't know who this person is it says they're from fucking Kansas but on the profile it does it bother you Sometimes, like the, the, it's it's tough to get through to me at a certain point. Like somebody calling me racist, it's like I don't care, whatever. Like you know, it's just, that, that, it, I, I've seen it too much. You I'm, know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like like these motherfuckers will say something about my like my son or, that's, or my that's, girl. That's it. And I'm like, yo, that's, listen, I'll yes. kill everyone up in here. But yeah. but the thing is, like, look, look at them. They're on, they're, you gotta be a loser to be on to, to even make comments on a fucking YouTube thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But like when I see somebody saying something about my kid. It's like I can't get that mad because I know I'm never gonna see that person in my but life. Right now, but, look at but then like, <laughs> I'll be on Twitter and I'll I'll, be, I'll click the fucking like button and I'll see somebody like the tweet and it's like somebody who I know lives oh. in LA. It'll make me want to You're fucking, fucking drive. To, you, you, yeah, know? you know, it's like just the fact that they're like adjacent to me and that they feel like I'm yeah. not gonna do something and you're right i'm sorry i'm not gonna do anything because i just have too much to lose at this yeah, point but, but it still just makes me fucking steep. i don't have to do anything I, I got a whole i got 500 people that'll do anything i say and I, mm. I, I don't even try like that but i enjoy when i see someone that has a problem they say something i know they get to they could get away from something mm. i enjoy smacking them in the fucking face and popping the eardrum in front of everybody and walking away yeah that's gonna be a good feeling yeah. They even bouncers too. When they all over, they, they say something. The first time I went, took my girl to Kansas City, the bouncer said something. I said, "Yo, go over there, slap the shit off." Bam! You know, in front of me. He was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." You didn't want her to see it. Or? No, she. I said, "Go." She was like, and she just ran. I was like, "Oh, cause she, like, she, she's down." How many years younger than you is she? I'm, I'm going to be 50 years old this year. Uh-huh. She's 29. Oh, okay. 28. I'm sorry, baby. Is it hard for her? 21 it, years. Is there a lot of shit that she has a hard time understanding about how much shit you've been through in your life? No, she she knows everything. Really? Yeah. It doesn't seem kind of foreign to her at a certain yep. point of how much. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, <laughs> she, she, she chills hard like like my people that she's put. That's my my, my love. So my, my 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 brothers treat her like a sister, and they did you know like like she's like she's always protected and she's fucking respected. So right, yeah. So sometimes like especially a lot of the hardcore shit, it feels like trying to explain some of the violence that I've seen and just crazy shit at shows and stuff and like so many people who are like a lot younger than me just have no fucking frame of reference for what I'm talking about I feel like I'm from another fucking planet at a certain point because they're just not going to be able to wrap their head around why these things happen you know well, it's like, it's, listen, the Holocaust is very violent, but the world is very violent. You know what I mean? Mm. You go to Israel, you go to fucking uh, uh, Palestine, you go for, uh, for anywhere in the world, it's fucked up. You know what I mean? It's true. We got, the Americans, we got it easy compared to other people. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I mean, when I go all over, when I go around the world and I see people, like real projects and the real people are fucked up, I'm like, damn, these people have to, are eating potato soup. You know what I mean? Mm. You, go over, you go to projects by my house, so my Queens guy has a Range Rover for the project. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? That's real. So? Definitely. How's it feel being 50? <sighs> I'm 37 and I feel fucking ancient, so I feel. You know why? It, 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 I don't slow down. I, I, I'm still I act like a kid. You know, but, but when I wake up sometimes, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, so like like so like I'll cough, my back will go out, I'll be like the fuck, shit like that. Mm. But yeah, you know. sometimes sometimes I just feel like I've lived a couple of lives now yeah. at this point because it's just been like so long that I've yeah. been kind of doing the same types of shit. Like just you know, like I, I feel like you you got to feel that way in a certain way too, where so many of the people that you deal with on a daily basis just they weren't around fucking no. 10 20 years ago and like they're getting to deal with this version of you yeah. you missed out on this whole saga that was my life yeah. 10 20 years ago that's why people want me to write a book and i'm like I, i'm not gonna do it till my mother passes away because if, i don't want her dying watching reading the book about me you think so, she would be that mortified oh my my poor mother she's like whenever the cops come to my house she's like, my danny would never do that and i'm like <laughs> 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 uh, say, say, uh, shout out to my mom. 
Right. Yeah, the mom's always. Oh, kinda, she's the best. They keep an idealistic yeah. view of their kid, right? My mom just don't even want to ask, you know? Yeah. She's, she's, my mom's such a good person. So I just like, I'm always making jokes of her. Definitely. So, she's a good person. For sure. When you were, you were just in Vegas, I, I just seen like your <laughs> caption said, like, we're just out sinning. Yeah. And I was just wondering, like, what, what, like, what's a wild night out for you at this point? We, we, this, like, well, we, tried, we, we used to, we, when I first met her, we were partying all the time. You know right. I mean? But now it's like, uh, I'll, I'll, listen, I'm me. I'll still fucking, we'll, we'll go crazy, you know, whatever. But like, I'm trying to like smoke a lot of weed now. But there'd be times I still sniff fucking a whole bunch of coke and fucking go to strip club with her and fucking kill buck wild. You know what I mean? Really? That's good. That's good to hear, man. Yeah, I can't stay young. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get, lie to fucking everyone. I, I love strippers. I love my girl. I love cocaine. I love whores. <laughs> I love fighting, you know, but that's part of my life. Okay. I fucking love that's this it. guy. I'm Puerto Rican, I'm dirty, grimy nigga. That's it. I don't give a fuck. You know? Fuck, yeah. Am I going to lie? That's mm-hmm. sick. Okay, I mean, okay, that, that comparison, though, like, I, I just think, because part of the conversation I had with Rob when I did that interview with him was he was talking about how he was, like, keeping his heroin addiction a total fucking secret, going to different towns with bands, asking them, hey, what's the worst part of town? And just pulling up to See, find yeah, some but fucking. That's a problem. I like, like, like the, the, the worst I want to do, me and my girl, like, yo, where are we get some some blow ecstasy and fucking what's the best strip club? You know what I mean? We, we go around the world. You know what I mean? Right. You know, we, and we party around the world. I, go, I party with the gangsters. We go everywhere. You know what I mean? Chile, fucking France. I, I took her to her birthday to Paris, France for, for her birthday when I first met her. Like, you know what I mean? That's so, fire. And when I, play, when I play Europe, it's, I'm treated like a fucking big celebrity. It's crazy. Like, I'll walk down uh, Santiago, Chile, and be like, Danny Diablo. You know, like, <laughs> like messenger. You know, so it's funny. That's sick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but at a certain point, you ever feel like you, you might just have to lay off the party and all together because you just... Yeah, you, well, know. you know what's going to happen? One day, I'm going to be stuck in a hotel for fucking... And be like, ah. Yeah, that's what I worry <laughs> about myself. Like, I haven't done <laughs> poker or anything in years. But I mean, like, I would be like half naked, and people take pictures, and my, my dick's going to be out. My mom's going to be like, oh, my God. That's how you want to go? You got to write the book. <laughs> Bro, write the book. You don't have to put it out. You can no, wait yeah, on yeah, your mom, no. but write the book now yeah, just no, so that if you I, did. I've been, I've been writing the book. It's, 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 I've been putting stuff down. There's a lot of funny stuff that people would not. It, my, my, there are a lot of people don't understand that I, I love making jokes. I, would not, I don't want to fight anyone. My thing is I'd rather have fun and laugh and make, you know, just have a good time. Right. right. But you know, violence was just a way to say how I grew up. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only person that ever broke my nose was my father. You know what I mean? Really? So my father was a cop, but my father was the first person I'd seen a buck fifty. He had a total boat size his face when I was three years old. Right. You know, I seen my father play a basketball game. The guy was fouling and he pulled his gun out, put it, do that shit again. And I was like, I was like, Daddy? You know, I was like three years old. <laughs> and this is while your dad was a cop. I was a cop. He was, he was probably like bad lieutenant. Different time, man. <laughs> Different time when there's no fucking cell phones <laughs> around. Hey, hey, come here. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, so I'm saying, but my father taught. He was the hardest man. Right? He wasn't that big, or everything. But his name, they, 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 they. I mean, seeing your dad do something like that at three years old, that, that all of a sudden it's like I don't need any further explanation of why you sort of ended up attracted to violence. <laughs> but before that, that, all I did was play basketball. My father played for, was in the army, played for the army, played for Brooklyn Tech High School, played for Brooklyn College, and mm. he also tried out for the Knicks. My father. Wow. When he was there. so I played basketball. My whole life. Then I got into hardcore and hardcore and women destroyed my life. Really? Yeah. That's because the drugs came in and all that shit. So, mm. but I'm happy now. You blame the women for the drugs? I thank God for the women with the drugs. Right. Yeah. Not just doing drugs, no women. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's whack. Yeah. You, know, you ever see a guy like if I'm hanging out with you right now, right? And we're doing do coke. I don't want to talk to fuck. If I do coke, oh, I'm the first bump. Like I don't want to be a fuck a whore. So I'm like, like uh, I don't want to hang out. I don't be like, hey, the, the stock market is great. I'm like, get the fuck away from me. Come here. Yeah. Bring, That's not- uh, Dude, I know dudes who pop ecstasies just to hang out with the homies. Like, I'm like the Guido dude, some like, weird shit to me. Like I don't, a Guido guy with a, a ring light. Like, hey, yeah, hey, hey, like whatever. I'm not, I'm not down with that. Anytime I put a drug up my nose, my entire life, the per- the purpose was to <laughs> then <laughs> kick it with some girls, yeah, bro. That's like how I, I was. I would, I, if I'm gonna be you. staying home in the house by myself, I'm not gonna yeah, do yeah. the drugs. Like I'm just not. That, what's the point? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, that's the the best thing about coke. You might be able to keep your fucking dick up for six hours that night. But you got to really do the right amount of coke. Yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah, because I've definitely done too much coke that there was no fucking taking place. There, and, well, dark times. Dark, <laughs> Hard times. Right? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> like out of the, the blinds, like what the fuck's going on? Right. You, yeah. Can you just remind me? Like I remember being uh, on tour <laughs> with my friend's band, and like I was like 19, so we're talking like I'm like 2003, 2004, or whatever. And you know, I meet the stripper in Virginia, and she got fake tits. And you know, I, I seen her in a tattoo magazine after that. She had the word "come" tattooed on the inside of her lip. But then I'm kicking it with her, and she's like name dropping, being like, "Oh, I'm kicking it with these DMS dudes, yada yada." <laughs> And I'm just like, fuck. Like, I'm really like, damn, like asking her mad questions and shit. Like, what, like, what do they do? Like, what, what's it like? You know? And I'm like, she's got this like insider perspective that I wasn't going to find at that time. Yeah, you probably I, ran through it too, man. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. That'd be cool if we were Eskimo brothers. I mean, we got to be. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Uh, when you think about like, like uh, what you want to accomplish at this yeah. point before you fucking kick the bucket. Like what really stands out to you? That's the shit that you want out of life. Right now, I just want. Um, oh man, I just want to be comfortable and fucking uh, like uh, basically be more secure in life. Like I, I want like, like everything's a goal to do to get to get the things I want in life. I want to get, I want a big house. I want I want to get married. To have like uh, have kids with her. Fucking just like. Uh, but it's still like I'm 50. I still want to go on the road, and this it's in me. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to get out there. Like I want to perform. I'm, perform, I'm, I'm playing this Saturday to a, a hood horror fest in LA. It's like all Mexican punk rock shit. Really? Yeah. And on I, Saturday. On Saturday. I'm at, can I pull up? Can I pull up, please. Come down. Okay. It's, 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 I'm doing. Uh, it's crazy. I'm. I'm uh, uh, it's all like Mexican hardcore bands. Like 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 it's like essay bands, and I'm doing Danny Diablo set, and also I'm coming out doing like two Scar, three Scarhead songs. Sick. So it's gonna be cool. That's badass. Yeah. Fuck. Was COVID the longest that you've gone without touring? Yes. Really? Yes. You feeling a little stir crazy? Yeah, but I just I just uh, I performed at uh, Thompson Square Park. Okay. I did that crazy thing. There was uh, people got mad it was during the COVID thing. I did. I saw it. Like yeah. Three thousand people. I performed Murphy's Law. I came on stage and did sit on the rat. That must have been rough for the perpetually offended hardcore fans they, out there. <laughs> they, they, they were so mad, it was like like uh, all, like Brooklyn vegan all these places. Like, they were like <laughs> they were so upset. I was like, yo, yo grow some balls and stop. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, and then two weeks later, it was, it was no one got COVID at that show. Yeah. That's another thing. Two weeks later, the, the massive thing was gone. If you got vegan in the name of your publication, I automatically don't give a fuck about what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are all cr They'd be like driving, they're, they're like talking on a thing. It's disgusting. I'm like, yo, you drive, you're not even watching where you drive. You're going to kill someone. Like, it's like, these people are, like, everyone's pussified. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people need to get smacked in the face to understand that, 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 that this could really happen. You know what I mean? That's yeah. why people just talk and talk. Like, I grew up. If I'm gonna say something and offend someone, I'm gonna get fucking punched in the face or stabbed, yeah. or shot. Right? The culture mirrors the dominant form of communication at that time. Yeah. So social media has like Twitterified everything. That's it's. It, I, I understand you know, because like like especially our, our women, how they look and what they do and everything. Like my my girl, my girl has a career and everything. And they say shit, and I'm like, oh, I'm fucking killed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, they, they think people like trying to get your weakness. Mm. And, you know, and I, I don't like that, man. Like, I would never do that to someone. Mm. I would never say something to the, the girl. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Then that, that, to me, that's how do you look in the mirror every day you wake up, you're such a bitch? Mm. That's all. It's, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> that's foul. <laughs> there's a, no, you know what it is? is that there's a lot of social currency to be gained. Yeah. From being that person who's, why who's would you, like, being offended crazy. and calling that shit out, you know. I would love to like, like, like Silent Jane, Bob, Jane, Silent Bob, and find everyone. Where they drive around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go to everyone's house and light them on fire. Pour <laughs> 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 well, gas and just light them on fire. Cigarette. Blah, you know? I support that. Yeah. See, that would be a cool video, right? I remember, like, <laughs> bro. I remember, like. Going to shows in like Death by fire. 2000 and like hearing about dudes get beat up for shit that they said online. Yeah, and it was like, whoa, like technology <laughs> is real. Like this shit is actually going to end up with people getting beat. Like now that's, I mean, how can you be, people get killed all the time for shit that they said on Instagram live now and rapping shit. And like the, the, the rap, the rap thing is even crazy growing up. Like, like I watch all this crazy stuff in rap. Yeah. I just talked to the guy. All right. Check out celebrity, celebrity boxing just hit me up. Yeah, talking about the, the stitches. Uh, that's the stitches. Uh, I was supposed to box them. I love this idea. This is the best idea. No, ever. no, you, you didn't hear about this. Five years ago, I was supposed to. 2017, day was it? 2016. I was. They celebrity boxing won me uh, fight stitches, 
And I was like, oh, man, I don't want to do it. I kind of like his music. It didn't bother me. <laughs> so he would not do it. And my fans were going, the hardcore kids like, fuck you, fight Danny Diablo. And he called me up, and he wouldn't do it. He's like, nah, I'm not doing it. So, so but right now, 6'9", he might do celebrity boxing. The guy hit me back. Would you want to do, I was like, 6'9", come on, bro. That's not, you know. You couldn't fuck with him? I would smack him so hard. <laughs> I know. I was like having a hard time even imagining Imagine. what that would look like. And I'm, and I'm 49 years, I'm only 50 years old. That kid's like 20, what? I'd still yeah. kill him like one arm behind my back. I'd kill that guy. Yeah. yeah? I mean, you've been through it. <laughs> you've probably never been in a fight like that. But it would be, be pretty cool to fucking smack the shit out of him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, all, how many people were snitching? You know what I mean? That would be fucking You, you want to get immediately, universally applauded <laughs> by hip hop? <laughs> I'm telling you, Danny Diablo have a moment in rap. Hey, yo, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> Celebrity boxing, hit me up. Amazing, dude. Um, <laughs> all right, is there anything else that you got like on the way right now? Anything uh, that you want people to look out yes, for? Yes, I got I got Diablo's Den podcast. Is my my podcast? Um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to listen to any episodes yet. I gotta get you on that. That's the first thing. Let's go. That'd be Let's fucking go. fun as hell. Uh, also, uh, I got Scarhead has a new record dropping on Force Five Records called uh, "Generators of Violence." Hard. It's, it's like the first EP. So fucking hard. We did the songs in three days. Wow. So it's coming out. Force Five Records. Donnie, that's the, that's owner of Force Five Records. My manager. Uh, I got a new video called Guidos and Irox just came out. I seen that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my girl hates it. <laughs> <laughs> they used to always tell me growing up that Irox stood for Italian retard out cruising. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Well. But, but uh, I just had a, uh, a video release. We played on the thing, and she was there. She's like, oh, fuck you. She's, like, <laughs> she's giving me head doing the, the thing. I'm on a coke. And the, the, the video is like, it's fucked up. But uh, I also got uh, my group Spick. <laughs> Okay. It's a court spit, it's me, Big Lito, and Joe Fado. Joe Fado's in Live at the Barbecue with Nas. Oh, wow. Okay. He's the one that put the, the G, him with G Rap, main yeah. source. Joe Fado is the, one of the first, like, he's the fight. You know, that's my brother from Queens. So, me, Joe Fado, and Big Lito. Big Lito's Dominican, Joe Fado's Puerto Rican, and I'm Puerto Rican. So, it's called Spick Spanish People in Control. Okay. We put a record out on Devil Rats Records in France. Uh -huh. and, uh, and also, I got an album out called The Triz. And it's on Force Five Records, hosted by DJ Cos, who just got a, a stroke. Shout out to DJ Cos, uh, my, my brother, my DJ. He's, he's a little fucked up. Praise Hope you feel better. Keep the Trizzy alive. Uh, and that's it. I got mad people on it, but it's it. that's it. I keep on doing music. Music. And GLD Casting Company with Chubby God and Lord Jewish. I took all my hardcore stuff and we flipped them and made beats. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm sampling my own shit. It's, that's, it's hard. So. Wow. I, I keep busy. Just look, look, Google my shit, go on my YouTube page, uh, subscribe, and all that shit. You know, whatever. But I'm Instagram, and that's it, man. Danny Diablo. Thank you, brother. Legend, bro. Uh, thank you. Yo, it was a big Adam, honor. thank you so much, brother. Thank hey. you. It means a lot to me, man. Yeah, for real. I mean, honestly, the fact, like, I grew up looking up to dudes like you and you in particular and like just to have you being so hyped to do the podcast yeah. made me super fucking like I, wow this life is it, it, gone you crazy know, you know how fucked up this this industry is you know what i mean like it's a lot of people like oh you're my boy everything i know dudes uh, who i i protected in hip-hop and everything and the fucking it's it's like it's an honor to meet you you know what I mean it's like it's cool because i come from like i grew up with dude like elliot wilson i grew up with sasha yeah, jenkins yeah, yeah. we went me sasha what Jen happened to your band with him I don't know, <laughs> but but Elliot Wilson grew up with me too. So I, 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 we all grew up together, man. But the, the thing is this: it's always good to see someone who has the heart of you oh, yeah. and, the, the, and the realness of you. Appreciate like, it, you're man. Made, you're made, you're made, and I look up to you when you're doing your podcast, and I want to do my podcast. Pretty soon, I gotta grow up a little bit. So once I hit fifty. I want to chill a little bit and just like try to do like a, a TV show or something like that. You know? Interesting. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're a ball of creativity. Wherever the <laughs> wherever that energy goes, something good is going to come out of it. Thank you, brother. For Thank sure. You. My Thank man. You. My man. Appreciate you. Much love and respect. Danny Diablo, No Jumper. Check us out on YouTube. Patreons are on the screen. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. And uh, we'll be streaming your music on Friday. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, brother. Much love. Thank you.